Hi friends, Megan here from Growing Up Herbal. Welcome back to my channel. If this is your first time visiting, then thank you guys so much for stopping by. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. And if you've been watching my videos for a while, then welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Today I'm going to show you how I make sore throat pastilles using herbal powders and raw honey. This is a recipe that I keep in my fall home apothecary for any time that the throat is irritated, whether it's due to coughing or sinus drainage that's irritating the throat or even allergies that make your throat itch or uh, burn. These pastilles are made with herbal powders and the powders that I'm primarily using in this recipe are slippery elm bark powder and marshmallow root powder. These powders are demulcents and what that means is when they're mixed with cool or room temperature water or your saliva, they release a slimy, ooey gooey kind of feel to them and they are cooling and moistening, which is really great if you have a cough or a sore throat or it's dry or irritated because it will counter the tissue state that's going on in your throat. So if your throat um, is hot and very dry feeling, then this cool moistening properties of these two herbs are going to feel really nice on your throat. Now, um, I'm also using a little bit of cinnamon powder in my pastilles. I love the taste of cinnamon. The the slippery elm root and or the slippery elm bark and the marshmallow root they taste okay, but I like to put some cinnamon powder in to give it some flavor. I actually coat the pastilles in cinnamon when I'm done, and cinnamon when it's mixed with cool or room temperature water actually also has a little bit of a demulcent property. So all of these herbs together are a really great combination for your sore throat. Um, now, these herbs are all fairly safe and all ages can use them. Um, there are no known safety issues with any of them. Um, as far as dosage goes, I like to roll my pastilles into small dime-sized balls and then I will just chew and suck on um, one as often as needed because, again, there are no safety or dosage rules that you have to worry about. So. Um, it's really nice because then you can use it as often as you want. Okay, so before I show you how to make these pastilles, I wanted to tell you a little bit about the powders. Okay, so Slippery Elm Bark has been put on the United Plant Savers at risk or to watch list and that's because it's been over harvested and so whenever you source your slippery elm bark you're going to want to make sure that you're sourcing it from a company that harvests it or buys it from someone who harvests it in a very sustainable way marshmallow root powder and cinnamon powder are fine those are plentiful and it's just the slippery elm that you want to be cautious about now you can use a lot of different powdered herbs in your sore throat pastilles. Anything that's demulcent and cooling is going to feel really great. This is just the formula that I like to use. I bought a bunch of slippery elm powder, a sustainably sourced slippery elm powder a long time ago. So this comprises the majority of the recipe, the formula that I'm using. You can easily just ignore the slippery elm root or the slippery elm bark. I keep calling it root, I'm sorry, slippery elm bark and just go with marshmallow root powder instead. So today I'm gonna to be making my sore throat pastilles using the folk method. This means I'm not going to be weighing or measuring out any of my powders or my honey. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I am gonna use this wooden spoon as the thing that I'm gonna scoop my powders out with. And so for my formula, I'm gonna do two parts slippery elm powder, one part marshmallow root powder, and one part cinnamon powder. And when I say part, this is my part. This is what I'm gonna be using. So I'm gonna be using two scoops of the slippery elm and one scoop of marshmallow and one scoop of cinnamon. And I'm gonna do my best to keep my scoops the same size. So to begin, I'm just gonna put it here on my plate. There's one and there's two. And then I'm gonna dip into my marshmallow root powder and try to get the same amount on my spoon. There's one of that. And then I'm gonna do the same for my cinnamon. All right, 
Now I'm gonna set the powders aside and you can see they're all mixed up right here on my plate. So at this point, I'm just gonna use my spoon and mix my powders together so they're mixed well. And I don't have more of one powder in one pastel than another. Oh, it smells good. You have to be careful with herbal powders because they like to float up in the air and then you breathe them in and they'll make you cough. <laughs> okay, so once I have this all sort of mixed together, as you can see, I'm going to take my raw unfiltered honey and I'm going to very carefully put a little bit in my powder, not too much. You always will do better to err on the side of caution. So less in the beginning, you can always add more honey if you need to. And I'm gonna mix this honey into the powder with the back of my spoon, just kind of push it in there. If you accidentally get too much honey, you can always add more powder to your mixture. And what you're looking for when you're making your pastilles is a thick sort of dough. So pastil means a uh, small candy or lozenge, and they're typically sweet, and they are typically made with some sort of herbal powder. And you're not wanting them to be too gooey. You wanna be able to roll the dough into a ball and have it hold its shape. You don't want it to sit down on your bowl or your plate and have it like kind of melt. That means it's too runny and you need to add more of your herbal powders to that mixture. Now, if you are making a large batch of these, you could put these in like um, a KitchenAid mixer and put your dough hook on and you could blend it, mix it up together like that. I usually only make small batches. This is a very small batch because I have some already. And it smells so good. So I'm gonna keep adding honey and I'm gonna keep mixing until I have my dough ready and I'll show you guys what that looks like then. Okay, so as you can see, I have my dough all mixed together and got a little bit over here. You can see how it's really thick looking. It's sticking to the back of the spoon. It's not dripping with honey. There's not really any powder left there. So this, I can test it by putting a little bit together and rolling it in my hands. And it stays formed. It's not sinking and like flattening out in my hand. It stays nice and in a ball. So I like to roll my pastilles into dime-sized balls, just nice and small kind of balls there. And you can even take your cinnamon powder, drop your pastille in it, and kind of roll it around a little, and then take it out and roll it in your hands, and that'll give it a nice little cinnamon coating, and then you can set it aside. So I'm gonna take some time to roll these out coat them in cinnamon, and I'll show you the finished product. So that's it, pastilles, they're that simple. Mixing herbal powders and some raw honey together, rolling them out into small shaped balls. And then you can just let these sit out and dry at room temperature, they'll get a little bit harder. You can also put them on a piece of parchment paper and put them in your freezer and let them freeze and then you can put them in like an airtight container like a glass storage jar with a lid. You wanna make sure you label it so you know what they are and um, 
then you can put them in your home apothecary or let them sit somewhere where you'll remember where they are and you can use them the next time you have a sore throat. Just pop one in your mouth, suck on it, or chew it up. It's totally up to you. They're really yummy. Um, you can make pastilles for all sorts of things. This is a really great way to take herbal powders. This is a great way for kids to take herbs. I love using herbal powders and making um, what I call vitamin balls, um, but they are made with really nutrient-rich herbs. And I also have um, a recipe on my blog for a spring tonic pastilles that are made with spring tonic-like herbs and mixed with a little bit of raw honey. And I'll link to that in the description box below. So again, this is just one of the things that I keep in my fall apothecary for sore throats, whether it's from allergies or coughing or sinus drainage. Um, but this has been really helpful for my family and I, and I hope you guys watching me make these um, have realized just how easy this is and how simple and that you can do it too and you can keep these on hand in your home apothecary if you need them the next time you have a sore throat. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. If you have any questions or comments about anything you've heard in this video, feel free to leave me a comment below and I will get back to you. And I hope you guys have a great rest of the day and I will talk to you soon. Bye.